This video is brought to you by New Physicist in association with Learn Engineering. Hey, New Physicist here. How does a solar cell work? This is the question that we are going to discuss in this video. I'm sure that after watching this video, you will have a clear idea about the working principle of a solar cell or photovoltaic cells. We know that a solar cell is a junction of two types of semiconductors, n-type and p-type semiconductors. Semiconductors are material which have a conductivity between that of an insulator and conductor. These n-type and p-type semiconductors can be made from uh, materials like silicon, germanium, gallium, arsenide. But, but we are talking about uh, silicon-based semiconductors because uh, silicon is the most widely used material to make solar cells nowadays. A silicon atom has four valence bond electrons. These four valence bond electrons perfectly bond with the four of its neighboring silicon atoms and form a uh, 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 diamond-like structure. So there are no electrons, free electrons in the conduction band. So silicon in its pure form, in its crystalline form, does not conduct electricity. That means uh, pure silicon is an insulator. But we can change the insulating property of a pure silicon, crystalline silicon, into a semiconducting property by adding external atoms, external atoms called uh, impurities to this uh, pure structure of silicon. This process of adding external atoms or called impurities to the pure structure of silicon is called doping. There are two types of doping, n-type doping and p-type doping. If we are adding phosphorus atom to the silicon structure, you can imagine this. A uh, phosphorus atom has five valence bond electrons. How many? Yeah, five valence bond electrons. What will happen? Okay, I'm replacing a silicon atom in the structure with a phosphorus atom with five valence bond electrons. These four of its five valence bond electrons will uh, form a bond with the four neighboring silicon atoms and there will remain an electron, an extra electron. The extra electron is free to move around through the structure. That means in this type of material, uh, electron is a charge carrier. So this type of semiconductor uh, being made by adding a phosphorus atom is called n-type semiconductor. But if we are adding boron, boron has three valence bond electrons. If we are replacing a silicon atom with a boron, what will happen? There will be a missing of electron, a lack of electron in a bond. That missing of electron is known as a hole. A hole is not a particular thing, it is just a missing of electron. Since electrons have negative charge and missing of electron can be given a positive charge, so the semiconductor made by doping with a boron atom is called is called yeah p-type semiconductor got it if we put together n-type and p-type semiconductors together what will happen yeah we know that in, in n-type semiconductors there is a high concentration of electrons and in p-type semiconductors there is a high con concentration of holes then what will happen is the electrons will drift the electrons will diffuse to the p-side and combine with the holes got it this process leaves behind the positive positive ions of the impurities on the n side and will create negative ions of impurities on the p side this will create an electric field from um, the p uh, the positive ions to the negative ions got it this uh, this um, diffusion of electrons from the n side to the p side continues until the uh, the electric field is sufficient to block the further diffusion of electrons from the n side to the p side got it so at a point at a certain point the p n junction reaches an equilibrium at that stage there are no diffusion of electrons and there will be a region around the around the junction called depletion region got it yeah there is a region about uh, around the junction called depletion region where there are no electrons the no free electrons no free holes only ions of the impurities are present in this region this depletion region is the heart of a solar cell that is where the most important action takes place in a solar cell got it when we place a, a solar cell in sunlight 
the photons. Photons are the energy packets in the sunlight. So when photons falls in the depletion region, the photon will give its energy to the electrons in the bond and will eject it to um, and move to the conduction band. The, because of the electric field, there is a strong electric field uh, through the depletion region. Because of this electric field, these electrons in the conduction band move to the N side and holds to the P side. Got it? Yeah. And if we, if we connect uh, external load to the N side and P side, these electrons on the N side and region will move through the external circuit and combine with the holes in the P side by creating an electric current and electric current flow through the external circuit. This is how a solar cell works. You have a, now you have a clear idea about the working principle of a solar cell, right? If you enjoyed this, if you like this video, please give a like button, share this video with your friends. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more powerful ideas and explanations like this. This video is brought to you by New Physicist in association with Learn Engineering, where you can learn complex engineering facts with ease with the help of animations. Thanks for watching.